हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू अनदर लेक्चर ऑन केमिकल इंजीनियरिंग थर्मोडायनेमिक्स टुडे वी शैल बी स्टडिंग अबाउट क्राइटेरिया फॉर इक्विलिब्रियम दैट्स क्राइटेरिया फॉर इक्विलिब्रियम फॉर थर्मोडायनेमिक सिस्टम्स आई एम प्रोफेसर अरविंद प्रसाद फॉर एन ओपन सिस्टम फॉर एन ओपन मल्टी कॉम्पोनेंट सिस्टम अ सिस्टम विच इज ओपन एज हैज मैनी components in it now by a components we refer to compounds we can say that the entropy is equal to or is function of the internal energy the volume and the moles of each and every component in the system so the change in entropy of such a system is the change in entropy with respect to volume that's the first term change in entropy with respect to internal energy that's the second term plus summation over all the components change in entropy with respect to change in a particular component holding the other components constant now let's consider an example or a system this is an isolated system this isolated system has two subsystems these two subsystems are divided by a permeable membrane the system to the right has moles n1 entropy s1 internal energy u1 and volume v1 the system to the right has moles n2 entropy s2 internal energy u2 and volume v2 therefore we can write as we had in this previous equation we can write for the left subsystem that is 1 ds1 is equal to dou s1 dou v1 into dv1 that is the change in entropy with respect to volume second term is change in entropy with respect to internal energy and the third term is change in entropy with respect to the number of moles similarly an equation can be written for system 2 which is on the right side for a closed system the first law is change in internal energy that is du is equal to dq that is a small amount of heat added to it minus pdv that is the work done on it now the heat added to it reversibly can be written as t into ds that is temperature of the system multiplied by the change in entropy of the system rearranging this equation we get tds is equal to dq du plus pdv now for this equation if we apply conditions of constant n that is constant number of moles which is natural because a closed system is something in which mass cannot be added and we also apply the condition volume constant then the change in entropy with respect to the change in internal energy is nothing but 1 over the temperature and the change in entropy with respect to change in volume holding the internal energy constant is pressure over temperature now on your right you have an open system to this open system a stream enters in and heat is added through this stream a small amount of moles dn enters in this stream has an enthalpy h bar that is enthalpy per unit mole at temperature t and p which is equal to the temperature and pressure of the system now for such an open system we can write that change in internal energy is equal to the heat added to it plus 
the work done on it plus the enthalpy of the stream and the moles that enter through the stream. Now this equation is a natural consequence of the steady flow energy equation for first law. A video on steady flow energy equation for first law and how do we arrive at it is in the playlist and you can have a look on it if you wish to clarify your concepts on that. Moving ahead, the differential change in entropy for this open system ds will be equal to nothing but the change in entropy due to heat added to the system which would be nothing but dq over the temperature of the system plus s bar that is the entropy of the stream entering in into a small amount of mass dn that is entering through this steam. Now if we multiply that equation we get Tds is equal to dq plus T s bar dn. Now we subtract the second equation that we get here from the first equation and we get, get du is equal to Tds minus Pdv plus g bar dn. Now at constant volume and internal energy we get dou s by dou n u v is equal to minus g bar over t that is this is nothing but the Gibbs free energy per unit mole. Therefore we can write that the change in entropy of subsystem 1 is nothing but 1 over the temperature of the subsystem 1 into dv1 plus P1 which is the pressure of subsystem 1 over T1 into DU1 minus G bar which is the Gibbs free energy per unit mole of the subsystem 1 over T1 into DN1. Similarly we can write the equation for subsystem 2. Now for such an isolated system the change in number of moles is 0. But the change in number of moles is also equal to the change in number of moles of subsystem 1 plus subsystem 2. The change in volume is also 0 but the change in volume is equal to the change in volume of subsystem 1 plus the change in volume of subsystem 2. A similar reasoning can be given for change in internal energy but since it's an isolated system we all know that the internal energy change for the isolated system is zero. Adding the two entropy equations, we get the change in entropy of the system as 1 over T1 minus 1 over T2 dV1 plus P1 by T1 minus P2 by V2 du1 minus g1 by t1 minus g2 by t2 dn1. Now remember one thing, why does this minus sign exactly come here? Please note, dn1 is equal to minus dn2, dv1 is equal to minus dv2 and du1 is equal to minus du2. That is because du dv and dn are zero. Now at equilibrium, it's a well-known fundamental that the change in entropy of an isolated system is zero. From that, we get, if we apply this to this equation, we get t1 is equal to t2, p1 is equal to p2, and Gibbs free energy for one is equal to Gibbs free energy for two, that is Gibbs free energy per unit mole for 1 is equal to Gibbs free energy per unit mole for system 2. Now for convenience sake, we drop the bar sign in the next slide. It's only for convenience. Also for isolated system at equilibrium, 
dg is equal to 0 now that naturally comes in because dg is equal to h minus ts now ds is 0 for an isolated system at equilibrium and dh that is the change in enthalpy will also be 0 therefore it is but natural that dg will be 0 for an open system at constant temperature and pressure the total Gibbs free energy is nothing but the summation of the Gibbs free energies of individual components multiplied by the moles of individual components. Now this Gi bar is the partial Gibbs free energy that is the Gibbs free energy of component I in the mixture. Differentiating this equation we get n dgi bar plus gi bar dn1. Now the fundamentals on how for a multi-component system at constant and temperature and pressure the Gibbs free energy is equal to the summation of the components ni into partial Gibbs free energy. You can watch videos on non-ideal fluid mixtures and ideal fluid mixtures. These are available in the playlist. Now from Gibbs Duhem equation you have Ni dGi bar is equal to 0. There is a video on the derivation of Gibbs free Gibbs Duhem equation 2. Please watch in case you are not clear with the fundamentals. Therefore, we get dNG is equal to summation Gi bar dNI. For phase 1, we can write dNG1 is equal to summation of Gi1 dNI1. A similar equation can be written for phase 2. Now, if we add the two equations, we get the following equation. But please note, at equilibrium, dNG is 0 or the Gibbs free energy change for an isolated system is 0. Now, phase 1 and phase 2, note, phase 1 and phase 2 or subsystem 1 and subsystem 2 together form an isolated system. Therefore, for such an isolated system, we have dNG equal to 0. And therefore, we get Gi, that is the partial Gibbs free energy of a component I in phase 1, is equal to the partial Gibbs free energy of component I in phase 2. Now this is the criteria for equilibrium. Now this criteria applies to ideal as well as non-ideal fluids. Whenever there are non-ideal fluids or wherever there are ideal fluids and they are in two phases, the components are in both the phases that is phase number one and phase number two the partial Gibbs free energy of the component in phase number one at equilibrium will be equal to the partial Gibbs free energy of component I in phase number two this is an important consequence of the criteria of equilibrium that is dg is equal to zero that is at equilibrium for any isolated system the change in Gibbs free energy is zero that is the end of my lecture hope you have got something from this do like and subscribe my videos 
and keep watching. There will be more on a regular basis. This playlist has been made specifically for undergraduate students and teachers. This playlist will have the entire spectrum of chemical engineering thermodynamics discussed. It's one stop for the entire course. Keep watching all the videos and do comment on them. If you have any specific requirement of any video, do write it in the comments and let me know. I will be only very glad to make videos for you. This system is a free resource to all the chemical engineers, professionals as well as students who wish to understand the subject of chemical engineering, thermodynamics. Have a great day guys and keep watching for more. Bye.